I'm James Knight from the Sisters Pastoral Co. We farm at a location called the Sisters, which in southwest Victoria, and for those that don't know that region, we're approximately two hours west of Geelong and 30 or 40 minutes north of Warrnambool. We run a commercial Angus breeding operation where all progeny, both female and castrated males, get taken through to 400 to 500 kilos. We're a perennial pasture-based system in a rainfall belt of 650 to 700 millimetres and farm just over 2,200 hectares over three properties. Georgie's got a background in communications and marketing, but also doing agribusiness at university. I studied rural science up at the University of New England, but cut my teeth in the corporate agricultural space, both on farm and in Melbourne as an operations manager for a large corporate. Um, so yeah, we came back in 2016 um, and went about essentially turning the volume up on what was already being done on this farm. The business is very commercially focused in nature. We're an Angus breeding operation. The steer progeny are destined for the feedlot market where a number of them get put on feed for 140 days, but there is a large wing of them that are going into a 240 to 270 day market with a lot of that product going to export. As we've expanded reasonably aggressively since we've come back, we are looking for a fertile, functional cow herd that has strong growth and carcass characteristics, essentially. That is why we're in Angus and why we choose Angus Genetics. Some historical stuff on the business here. My father-in-law actually started in Herefords and was running bullocks at that point in time, going into the niche steak market, so to speak, in Melbourne. In his generation, uh, he moved from Hereford to Angus in the mid-90s after purchasing a B double load of heifers from Glen Avon Angus up in northern New South Wales at Gyra. From there, he's been using them ever since. And we've also moved from bullock trade to a feeder steer market. We are a spring calving operation solely now that now sees us joining approximately 1,800 females annually from a base of seven or 800 when we started. So we've seen significant growth. All of the heifers are fixed time AI'd to a high indexing straw and the system is quite intensive from a stocking rate point of view. Cows and everything is put under a fair bit of pressure during winter with the key profit driver being midwinter stocking rate or stocking rate which equates to kilos of beef per hectare and if we drill down on that further our key focus is utilizing as much pasture as we can in spring to meet that kilos of beef per hectare target. Yeah, so genetic selection and particularly bull selection, I can't help but feel. We seem to be using more and more information annually, but I think we just are quite disciplined on key attributes we're looking for in those EBVs, being growth rate, a good spread from 600 day to mature cow weight, EMA, and IMF is one that we're focusing on more closely than we ever have. But the last thing we want to do is focus on IMF to the point where we start to run down other EBVs. So 
We put a lot of work into bull purchases each year. We're buying approximately 10 to 12 bulls a year as a replacement of bull tamer 40 to 50 head. I think if there's anything that I've got to do in this generation or that concerns me is I've got to make sure that the strong herd that we inherited or were fortunate enough to take on, that I can see those attributes carry on for the next 40 or 50 years. So my father-in-law plays a key role in bull and genetic selection. And what he's very good at is that phenotypic stuff that we look for in a bull. And that's what we're going to first and foremost before any other figures that what we're buying is actually going to be functional and fertile in a commercial system and that we're going to have bull longevity. And if my father-in-law's taught me anything, it's that progeny and what we sell has to add value to the rest of the supply chain. So we're very focused on making sure there's value for others post-farm gate. Management practice and philosophies, I wouldn't know where to start. I'm very data and evidence focused in our decision making to getting some feedback on our livestock. We realised we had the right animals and they were the right breed. It was then about using data and evidence to grow the business, turn the volume up and do things better, which still continues today. We just essentially looked at areas that we could improve. Pasture management in this game is key. Our main aim as business managers is to put more grass in front of animals, which leads to increased production. Whether that's with more animals per hectare or better animal performance, particularly that wiener platform year, that 250 kilo wiener through to a 450 kilo feeder animal, also making sure we're very profitable at the same time and we can continue to scale it. I think as a young person in agriculture, what's so exciting for me is that there's so many opportunities out there and, and whether it be working with Angus cattle or cropping or dairy, whatever the particular industry may be, there's so many different roles within the supply chain that one young person could venture into. The opportunities are endless in ag. And like I said, it's very, very rewarding. Wouldn't matter whether you're sitting in a laboratory or on farm, you're still adding significant value to a supply chain. There's just so many facets in this agricultural industry that you could sit in to add, to add value. And I see it in our business as well. Like there are so many people that we work with to end up, you know, selling commodity out the front gate. A perfect animal, animal to me is an Angus female. It's a really good question, you know, because I can't help but feel currently She's pretty close. <laughs> She's pretty close to perfect. I don't. We've got to continue to be better and make really fine tweaks. But like I said, she's an incredibly functional, fertile, resilient animal with good growth and carcass characteristics. Um, I don't think I need to be any more specific than that. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!